we are out in Pike County, Kentucky today, uh, just outside of uh, Blackberry, Kentucky, a little place called Dials Branch. And uh, I came over here earlier today. I've actually been over here twice today. We are looking, I'm looking for a grave in particular, one particular grave. Um, this is one, now this was a, uh, a Hatfield clan member, you know, that has been lost to history. Uh, you know, mainstream history, I should say. I'm sure somebody out there, somebody knows. You know, some, somebody knows the story, somebody knows what's going on and all this kind of stuff. So that's why we figured we'd make this video. Now, we ran across this by accident. Heather was researching a, um, a, a different story. She was doing something else and happened to run across a death certificate that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. It was just kind of all by its lonesome and no story. There's no background. There's not much of anything to it. Um, like so, I guess today's story isn't really a story at all. It's more of a very interesting mystery. Now, like I said, we stumbled across this death certificate doing another story um, for a man named Boyd Hatfield. Now, we noticed a few things right off the bat that caught our interest. First, he was murdered. Second, he was the sheriff at the time. And third, he was a relative of mine. Uh so this is a death certificate we found. Boyd Hatfield. He's married to Louisa Runyon. He was 45, deputy sheriff. His father was George Hatfield. His mother was Martha Hatfield. Um, deputy sheriff, right here, Williamson. Gunshot wound, officer of law. Where did the injury occur? Pinson Fork, which is in, here in Kentucky, November 30th, 1931. Gunshot wound of both lungs and abdomen, homicidal, pulmonary congestion, I believe that says. So I looked up any kind of articles that I could find on this. I can find anything except that it was he responded to an altercation and was killed on like officer down sites. We did some research and came over this morning to do the story and the story it led us to a different graveyard the one where uh, Bad Elias is and a whole bunch of others and I could not remember seeing this grave up there but I went up anyway and we did the video and guess what it's not the right grave so not only is the story been lost the grave has been lost we found um there were some on this uh on this find a grave listing it had a totally different graveyard but it did have down below it someone had put in the gps coordinates of the graveyard so i went back home and you know we plugged in the gps coordinates did a little bit of research and i think we found the grave i'm not sure yet if I'm right, we're right up on this hill here. Now, um, like I said, we did a whole lot of searching, you know, after we found this death certificate. And the only thing that we could find on this man was that he died in an altercation near Pinson Fort, Kentucky on November 30th in 1931. Um, his father, George Hatfield, who's the son of my fifth grandmother, Annie and Ephraim Hatfield, uh, Boyd's mother, was Martha Hatfield. Find a grave has Boyd's mother as Missouri Hatfield, but Boyd's death certificate says Martha Hatfield. Uh, anyway, Boyd was, uh, he was married to Louisa Runyon. They had seven children according to census records. The question is, what happened to him on that November 30th in 1931? We may never know. But we're kind of hoping, like I said, we're kind of hoping that maybe someone else may be able to, to help us out here and shed a little bit of light on the subject. Um, you know, obviously the man was, you know, he was a police officer. He was a police chief, or a uh, sheriff, excuse me, sheriff at the time, and was killed in the line of duty. If that's not merited, 
you know, to look up someone's history and, you know, tell their story, then quite frankly, you know, I, I really don't know what is. You know, in all honesty, we, we may never really know what happened. I, I don't know. We'll find out. But we've come here to pay our respects. And we're going to go up here in a second, uh, and we're going to see if we can't find him. It's a bit of a steep hill. Uh, I stopped. Like I said, I came over earlier and went on up the holler and looking, and I found a couple other graveyards and did some, you know, did some investigating in them and never did find, you know, obviously he's not there, so I didn't find him. But, uh, so we went, like I said, I went back home, did some more research and came back over and I happened to see a gentleman working on this house he's doing a little bit of work to it so I stopped and I asked him hey do you have you ever heard of Boyd Hatfield you know the cemetery all this kind of stuff he said I think the one you're looking for is right back behind my house here on the hill so we're going to go up here and honestly I, I don't know I could be wrong it could be the wrong graveyard so like I said we're putting in a little bit of extra effort on this one uh, Ratliff Hurley Adkins I see some Hatfields I see him. Whoa. Gate fell off. Uh, okay, I'll fix that before I leave. Not my cemetery. But I'll fix the gate anyway. I see him right back there. There he is. In the back. But we'll look at... <sighs> sorry guys straight uphill sorry bear with me a second catch my breath this is Columbia oh, you can get the camera in there Columbia Hatfield Mullins This is, obviously this is a World War II. Oh man, this is Korea too. Look here. Judy Alexander Hatfield, Kentucky. MM1, US Navy, World War II and Korea. June 6, 1923 to October 14th, 1956. Very short life, but very interesting time in our country's history. But, you know, this one is W.J. Hatfield, 1894 to 1932. Just in the morning of his day in youth, and love, he died. Hmm. Wow. Anderson Hatfield. You know this, you see a lot of these in a lot of the cemeteries around here. I don't know if you guys, you know, if your cemeteries do that or not, but you'll see these in a lot of cemeteries around here. A little box with flowers and you know a wreath inside to keep the keep the elements from web Phillips what's this this is a hat field as well here hang on let me get down there I can't read it from here <clears throat> Emerson Hatfield February 1st 1913 to May 5th, 1937. 
about the same time, isn't it? And William some of the moss off of it. This is William Emerson Hatfield, uh, 1937 to 1995. Started to say 55. Beautiful in it. William Jeff Webb, 1932 to 1995. And here we go, there's another military. World War II. George Ashbury Webb, Michigan, Tech 5, 389th Field Artillery Battalion, World War II. September 16th, 1916 to March 1st, 1973. Good job. You did well. Infant. This is infant. Ancy E. Webb. February 17th, 1921. A lot of these are really old. There's Infant Pricey Webb, November 11th, 1919. Back there's Boyd's, that's where we're getting to. But we'll look around a little bit. The whole place isn't very big. You can see the fence right there, and this is where it starts. Uh, this is Quinny Matney Hatfield, 1907 to 1971. Cassius Witt Hatfield, 1908 to 1952. Now this one, I don't see a name. Like there used to be a plaque, just a little stone, there's one broken. But right there's Boyd. This will, since we're right here, this is Boyd Hatfield, guys. This is the one that we came up here to find. Boyd W. Hatfield, September 14th, 1886 to November 21st, 1931. Gone to a bright home where griefs cannot come. It's about the truth, ain't it? But like I said, that's, you know, that's something, you know, somebody, I mean, not just the fact that he's a Hatfield, you know, and to have one that was, you know, killed in the line of duty, a police chief, or a sheriff, I keep saying police chief, and to, you know, to be sort of missing you know, we can't really find any information about the death, you know, the, the altercation, can't really find much about it. But, uh, you know, we just kind of wanted to come up here and find Boyd Hatfield, pay our respects. And, you know, you never know, we might, we might get lucky. And one of you guys might know this man's story. Somebody does, you know. Somebody knows his story. Somebody told someone, somebody knows something. And we're just kind of hoping that one of you guys can help us bring Boyd's story back. Look here. Well, this is Boyd Weston Hatfield, Corporal, U.S. Marine Corps, World War II, April 19th, 1922 to June 18th, 2004. Louisa Hatfield, 1892 to 
But look at these, these big ones back here. Look at that. Missouri Hatfield. Born October 19, 1870, died May 1st, 1913. It's an old grave there, isn't it? And Anderson E. Hatfield, uh, born July 2nd, 1884, died August 14th, 1922. Victoria Hatfield, uh, March 26, 1882 to January 6, 1972. Terrible, isn't it? The love of your life passes away. And you have to wait decades. Look at this one. How pretty is that? In my father's house, there are many mansions. This is Melda. Wife of W.J. Hatfield, born September 26, 1895, and died April 22, 1918. Gone but not forgotten. And some of these little ones, there's no way of knowing who, unless, no, it's just a plain... Put it back the way it was. And you can see there's several of those here. Look at that one. But he did some carving on that one. Mm. All it says is unnamed. Wow. Unnamed. That one kind of caught me off guard. I didn't expect that. I've never seen one that just says unnamed before. Uh, Ira Hatfield, 1881 to 1930, and Edna Hatfield, uh, 1888, doesn't have a death date on hers. It says their toils are past, their work is done. They fought the fight, the victory's won. <laughs> That's cool, I like that. A lot of peace, you know, and, and Christian, religious, you know, you kind of hope you're off to a better day, a better thing. But, uh, look at that one, look at that picture. Huh. Julius C. Sullivan, born October 22nd, 1913, and died October 4th, 1929. Young man, very young man. Our daughter, Ola F. Sullivan, 1915 to 1918. Mm, stuff like that breaks your heart, don't it? Unknown. Unknown. Lafayette. Hackney Jr., 1928 to 1975. And Harold Glenn Hackney, 1930 to 1978. Fayette Hackney, 
1907 to 1978, and Zilma Hackney, 1910. It doesn't have a doesn't have a death date. Bugs are getting a little bit outrageous. It's trying to get a little bit cloudy today, and bugs are getting a little buggy. This one is Drake. It says Russell M. Senior, 1936 to 1988, and Edna May, 1942. No death date. Uh, Harris, what is this? Is this? It's loyal to our duty. I believe that's a a fireman symbol if I'm not mistaken well yeah I guess it is the uh, fireman's hat and pick and ladder I guess it probably is well, he was probably a fireman Ella Jane Webb 1892 to 1966 there's something back in the woods deer or something Something big, deer, bear, I don't know. Nothing bigger than a squirrel, I can tell you that much. Okay, this is Elbert Lee Vipperman, March 22nd, 1901 to June 7th, June 17th, excuse me, 1928. Like I said, it's not very big, and you can see there's some unmarked ones. You know, here and there. But we finally found him. We found Boyd. It took me a couple trips. But we finally found him. And like I said, if any of you guys know anything if y'all you know family stories whatever we'd sure love to hear it and i would imagine a lot of our viewers would like to hear this too how did this man die what happened on that night it's just strange isn't it that you know i mean you know your your deeds you think will live on you know when you get right down to it your stone is the only thing that'll live on it'll live for about 100 years you know, your story, unless there's someone around to tell your story and keep your story alive, your story will die. That's what we're doing today. We're trying to keep Boyd's story from dying. Anyway, if any of y'all know anything, just hit us up in the comments down below and we'll pin it to the top and share it with everyone else. And hopefully, we can find out what happened to Boyd. Anyway, guys, uh, I guess I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to go ahead and fix the gate for him. It just came off the hinges is all it is. So I'm going to go ahead and fix the gate before I leave. And get ready to head on back out. Uh, we did did two today did a whole nother story we did the other the other cemetery where boyd was supposed to be like i said i'd been there before and you know i was going to show it to y'all and lost the video to it but i didn't remember boyd being you know that a big grave like that being up there and so when we went up there today and looked it's you know it wasn't there so we tried to tried to find it it's taken us all day it's taken me all day literally to find this grave but we found him Rest in peace, boy. We still remember you. We may not know all the details, but we still remember you. Anyway, guys, thank y'all for watching. Thank you for coming along. Enjoying the beautiful day out here with me. You know, it's, it's kind of comforting. You know, it sounds silly. You're talking to this camera, you know, all the time. You're out by yourself in the middle of nowhere talking to a camera. So, that kind of helps. Makes it a little bit easier. You know? Anyway, 
we'll talk to you guys later y'all have a wonderful day and like i said thank you for watching and we will see you next time on the hillbilly files p.s i fixed the gate all right now try that again see y'all later have a good day leo out blah 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 bye, -bye.